must start burning your father's chops. <laughs> uh, Mum, uh, what's this? Oh, it's a surprise for your father. It's a sexy, revealing costume for the ball. <laughs> oh, it's very nice, Mum. Do you think Dad'll wear it? Oh, Ray, you're a trick. It's for me. I'm going to be Cleopatra. Oh, what's Dad going as? A pyramid? Oh. <laughs> well, why not? It's perfect. He's got the head for it. Point it. And solid as rock. <laughs> well, actually, Craig, your father hasn't absolutely, as such, agreed to go yet. Why? What do you say? No bloody way and went back to his paper. <laughs> Why won't he go out at oh, night? Oh, I don't know, Craig. He said something about wild purple valiants roaming the streets at night. You know what your father's like. Yeah, he's mad. <coughs> your father is not mad, Craig. He's just very different to normal people. So is King Kong. Oh, I don't know what to do with him, Craig. He doesn't talk to me anymore. He never goes out. He's just not interested in anything I have to say. I don't think he ever listens. Oh, he's not that bad, Mum. Oh, yes, he is, Craig. Once he's got his nose in that paper, I could tell him that Prince Charles was hiding in his wardrobe, drinking his beer, and he wouldn't hear a word of it. Oh, oh come on, Mum. No, it's true. No one listens to me these days. Do you, do you want a chop? What'd you say? <laughs> do you want a chop for dinner? Oh, oh, no. I've got to go out. Ooh. Oh, oh I'll see you later. Bye, bye, dear. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Oh, hello, dear. How was your day? Bloody shambles, of course. <laughs> Someone should blow apprentices up. <laughs> well, what have they done? For three weeks, Thelma, I've been working in this terrible pong. The boss keeps coming over and putting palm olive gold on my desk. Then all the girls in the typing pool gave me a large bottle of airwick and a note saying, Take the hint, Mr. Smelly. <laughs> I didn't know till this morning I found out what those pimply-faced apprentices had done. What? Nailed a dead fish under me desk. Oh, <laughs> Got me own back, though. How? Put super glue in the earpiece of their phone and rang them up. Oh, you right, I did. The local barber thought it was Christmas. The shop floor is full of Yule Brinners and Yakkers. Where's me paper? In the lounge. Oh. <laughs> Uh, the apprentices don't want to work. All they're interested in is their porno panel vans and naked skateboards. <laughs> See you later. Later? Well, I haven't seen you at all. Uh, do you want to see me? No. Oh. You want to see me? No. Well, that means I win then. <laughs> Just remember, I'm the one that still wears the pants in this house, boy, and I didn't want to see you before you didn't want to see me. Oh, yeah, sure, Dad. See you later. Bloody kids think they're in the world. Well, Ted, do you like to hear about my day? Yeah. I said, do you want to hear about my day? Yeah. Ted, you're not listening to me. Of course I'm listening and my ears are open, see? <laughs> now, what you say? Well, firstly, the butcher started flirting with me and then he chopped his thumb off. <laughs> Isn't that all? Yeah. Plumber came and fixed the septic tank. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Then he raced inside, tore off all his clothes, and chased me round and round the lounge room with his blowtorch. <laughs> yeah. And then another 12 plumbers came to help him. They tied me to the fridge, put on some wall paint, then they set my feet on fire. And then, after they'd all had their evil ways, they put the lid back on the septic tank, filled in the trench and quietly ran away. What the plumber charge? Ted, Prince Charles is hiding in your wardrobe, drinking your beer. Tell him to leave the money on the fridge. Oh! <laughs> Haven't you finished reading Mandrake yet? Shut up. You've just turned this bloke into a camel. Oh, yeah? What's he gonna do, smoke him? <laughs> Listen, I'm having no insults to Mandrake in this house, because Mandrake's an Australian. Oh, he's not an Australian. He bloody is. He's Ginger Meg's father. <laughs> Mandrake is Ginger Meg's father. All right, who's Lothar's old man? Kamal. There's something seriously wrong with you, Mr. Bullpit. I'm not talking to you anymore. All right. Please yourself. I don't want to talk to you either. As a matter of fact, Mr. Smarty Sardine Sucker, I didn't...
didn't want to talk to you before you didn't want to talk to me. So I win, you lose. I'm the king of the castle. St. <laughs> Tettles, are you going to come to this masquerade ball tomorrow night? I'm not going anywhere. But what's all this masquerade glomp? All right, all right. Have it your own way, then. It's the Young Libs Fancy Dress Ball. Bull. Young Libs don't have balls. <laughs> They have silver spoons. I'm not going anyway. I know why you don't want to go out at night. Because little Teddles is afraid of the dark. Oh, I'm not afraid of the dark. I was born in the dark. <laughs> well, I was a stroke of luck, because if they'd seen you, they would have swatted you. <laughs> That's the trouble with you modern blokes with moustaches. When I was a boy, it was always dark. We couldn't afford electric light. I had to look at television by candlelight. <laughs> They didn't have television when you were a boy. I didn't know that. Well, why not? Because it was too bloody dark to see. Yeah, but... Listen, Tettles, think of Mrs B. She'd love a night out. You've never given her a night out. Of course I have. I took her to the opening night of that big film. What film? Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Listen, Tettles, she'd love a night out. It's free. I'm paying for it. No, no, I'm not going anywhere. I've got to stay here and wait. What for? The sewerage. I'll get you some. How much do you want? <laughs> Look, I've been waiting 20 years and written thousands of letters to get the council to connect the sewerage. They're only just round the corner and I'm not going out on the night they're going to come and put it on. But the sewerage blokes don't work at night. They don't work during the day either. If Dad refuses to go, why are you still making the outfit? Oh, well, pride goes before the ball, Grit. Besides, I can always crumple it up and give it to charity. But what charity wants a Cleopatra outfit? Oh, great. Australia is a multi-racist society. <laughs> Think of all those Egyptian boat people. They love a Cleopatra dress. <laughs> Mum, the boat people don't come from Egypt. They come from up north. Refugees from Queensland. <laughs> Mind you, it doesn't surprise me one little bit. It's that Premier man, you know. Oh, he's strange. I mean, any man who'd sell his nuts can't be all there. <laughs> you can say that again, Mum. Why, what'd I say? Oh, forget it. Oh, it's such a shame, no, Mum. Why won't he take you? Why won't he do anything? What do you mean? Nothing. <laughs> Come on, Mum. How bad is this nothing? Oh, great. Great, it's terrible. He doesn't talk to me anymore. He doesn't cuddle me anymore. What about, you know, I mean, does he... Greta, it's your father we're talking about. <laughs> but you know his attitude to all that. No. Neither do I. <laughs> oh, great. After 30 years of marriage, I, d I just feel like I'm living with a stranger. Mum, you've got to work at this marriage if you're going to save it. And the only way to do that is get professional help. Oh, great. We can't afford a maid. No, Mum, I meant a marriage guidance counsellor. Do they do housework too? <laughs> Mum, listen to me. I have a friend who is a marriage counsellor and I'll make an appointment for you both tomorrow. Oh, your father would never go. Well, don't tell him who she is. Tell him, tell him she's a doctor. Oh, he won't go and see a doctor. He says they give you cancer of the wallet. <laughs> All right, tell him she's a psychiatrist. Great, he'd never go to a psychiatrist. Ted says that anyone who goes to see a psychiatrist must be out of their minds. Well, there must be someone you would take him to. What's he interested in at the moment? Sewerage. <laughs> I had to ask him. Oh, hang on, that will do. Tell him she's on the council. That way you won't be lying to Dad when you tell him you're taking him to talk to a counsellor. Greta Bertolucci. That's dishonest. It's devious. It's sneaky. And it's worth a try. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Hello? Oh, well, there's no one here, Ted. <laughs> That's typical of local councils. Probably all down in the pub, leaning on their shovels. Ted, actually, this councillor doesn't have a shovel. No wonder the sewerage has taken so long. Well, you see, Ted... Good morning. Be... Just oh. a minute, just a minute. We were first. <laughs> no, no, go on, go on. You go out in the waiting room and talk to the goldfish like I have to. Go on, go on, go on. You don't understand. Keep out of this, woman. Listen, you. Rack off. <laughs> but you're here to see me. I'm the councillor. Pick on me, grandmother. You're a woman. How'd you guess? Well, I know these things. I know lots of things. Well, just a minute. How can you be a woman in sewerage? 
The same way you can be a pig in ah-ha-ha, uh -huh, you... You'd have to be Mr. Bullpit. How'd you guess? Just a stab in the dark. And this is... This is with me. I'm Thelma Bullpit. Hello. I'm Elizabeth Windsor. Please sit oh, down. Oh, lovely name. Any relation? No, no. <laughs> now tell me, Thelma, how long have you two been married? Uh, Thirty years. Thirty years, mm. you would have got less for murder. <laughs> and uh, what were you before you were married? Oh, very happy. <laughs> and you, Mr. Bullpit, what were you before you were married? Single. <laughs> no. But were you happy? Of course I was happy. It was in the war, wasn't I? I like war. <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> Looking back on it, Thelma, why did you get married? Oh, we had to. Why? We had the church booked. <laughs> listen, I haven't been paying my rates to you mob for 20 years to listen to you two Sheila's rabbiting on with all this memory glob. Now, when am I going to get some action? Perhaps it'd be better if I spoke to your husband alone, Mrs. Bullpit. Oh. Quite right. Just remember, it's my name on the letterbox. If you'd just like to wait outside. Yes, all right. Yes, all right. I'll just have a little chat to your goldfish. <laughs> Watch out for that black one, Phil. He gets very nasty when you poke him with a biro. <laughs> now, Mr. Bullpit, every day I speak to lots of people with lots of different problems. Now, what's yours? I'm not getting it. <laughs> I see. And how long have you uh, not been getting it? 20 years. <laughs> Good heavens! What about your wife? What about her? Well, doesn't she want it too? Of course she wants it. We both bloody want it. <laughs> what are you doing about it? Everything. I've written hundreds of letters. <laughs> what? To your wife? To the council. But the council can't do anything about it. Of course they can. They turned it on for Bill and Betty Jackson round the corner. <laughs> I watched them. You watched? Yeah. Bill had his Hawaiian shirt on and I had a beer while they were doing it. Where were they doing it? Round the back of the house, in the trench, behind the nanny. Where else would they do it, of course? Well, what about the bedroom? Are you mad, woman? I think I see. Because you were in the war, you like doing it in a trench. <laughs> Doing what? Well, sex. Sex in a trench? Not, not in the army I was in. <laughs> Have you escaped from somewhere? Mr. Bullpit, why did you come here? To put the sewerage on. But we've got the sewerage on. <laughs> Your woman, mine. Oh, God, it's hard. Look, I can't help you. I'm a marriage guidance counsellor. But you're a woman. What would you know about marriage? Everything. I'm a trained specialist, a professional in keeping marriages together. I should know something about it. I've been married four times. <laughs> Ruth, four husbands. How come? I get them wholesale. <laughs> now, can we please talk about your marriage? Why? Because if we don't, I'll be out of a job. And I can't afford to be unemployed. I've got four bludging husbands to support. Well, it's your own fault. Serves you right for being a raver. Mr. Bullpit, I am not a raver. <laughs> Four husbands, sex in a trench. You must go off like a rocket. I do not go off like a rocket. But if I did have a rocket, I know where I'd launch it. <laughs> it's obviously no use talking to you. I'll see if I can get some sanity out of your poor wife. Excuse me. Your fish is dead. <laughs> well, come on, give us a look at you. It's a surprise, so you close your eyes so you can't see anything. Yeah, all right. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. Well, you can open them now, because here I come. Oh. 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 <laughs> Mum, you look terrific. But that, that's a really authentic outfit. Who are you? Uh, I'm your mother, dear. <laughs> no, Mum, who are you meant to be? Oh, I told you, Craig. I'm Cleopatra, love goddess of the Nile. Ah, and who's that going to be, Mark Antony? Very close, Craig. Do I look all right? Oh, do you look all right? Oh, Mum, compared to you, Elizabeth Taylor looked 
Nothing like you do. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. <laughs> I still can't believe you got Dad to go. Well, actually, it wasn't me. It was the marriage counsellor lady. She persuaded him. How? Oh. By being kind and thoughtful and threatening to sue him for 50 bucks for the dead fish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, Craig, your dinner's in the oven. Mm. Your father has counted all the bottles in the fridge, so I snuck in an extra one, so you might as well drink it. Leave <laughs> the money in the fridge! Oh, he can hear when he wants to. <laughs> now, Craig, you will be all right. Oh, Mum, I'll be fine. Kathy's coming round. What for? What do you think? Uh, <laughs> to help me uh, watch television. Oh, isn't that nice mm. of her? Well, I've put the alarm on for 11.30. Why? Because we'll be home at 11.45 and it'll just give you time to get the telly on. Mum! I didn't come down with the last shower of Mother's Craig. <laughs> oh, I bet that ding-dong's the door. Yeah. It can't be the phone because that usually goes ring, ring. Yeah, well, calm it down, Mum. Yeah. Yes, oh, I'm coming! I'm coming! Here I am. Hello, Mum, are you oh, ready? Oh, Bruno, Bruno, it's you. Oh, don't <laughs> thank Mum! <laughs> Are your children all right? Well, uh, who do you think I am, Mrs. B? Oh, um, uh, Al Grasby. <laughs> no. No, no. no. Sir John Kerr? <laughs> Nearly. I'll give you a clue. I steal money off people. Oh, of ah. course! Ah. Yeah, oh, the treasurer, John Howard. <laughs> I'm a gangster. Which party do you belong to? Oh, Mum, what about me? What do you think? I'm a flapper. Oh, Greta. Oh, how original. Who'd have thought of going as it in a dolphin in a dress? <laughs> <laughs> Mum, what do you mean? Flapper the dolphin. <laughs> no, Mum, that's Flipper. No, Greet. Flipper was a horse. Right? Don't you remember that show you used to watch when you were children? My friend Flipper. <laughs> no, no, was it Leave It to Flipper? The, uh, Flipper knows best. Oh, I'm going. This is too hard. I'm going. Oh, Mum, calm down. Great, I am just so excited. We're all going out together, even your father. Where is Grumblebum? He's just buckling himself into his costume and putting on his headpiece. Come on, Ted, hurry up or we'll be late. Uh, be late. I'm not wearing it, Phil. My knee's got cold. Oh, come on, Dad. Yeah. Yes, come on, Ted. Your love goddess awaits you. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. Watch out, Ted. I told I tore a putty tat. Watch it, mate. Jeez, I'd hate to have to clean out the bottom of your cage. You watch it or I'll peck you to death. Ted, you look wonderful. You look just so... so... yellow. But, Mum, I thought you said he was going to the ball as a famous character in history. Oh, he is. He's going as Sylvester's lunch. As Julius Caesar's canary. <laughs> to Julius. The canary ate him. <laughs> well, I suppose you all think you're funny. Well, you're not. If anyone's funny in this house is me. Well, I don't want to be funny at the moment, I can tell you. <laughs> You've got no choice at the moment. Ah, careful how you sit down. You might hatch the pillow. <laughs> all right, all right. You've all had your fun. Now I'm not going. Oh, Ted. <laughs> We're all dressed, ready to go. Now come on. No, no, I haven't even had any dinner. <laughs> Don't worry, Teddles. We'll get some shell grit on the way. <laughs> hey, waiter. A double serve of cuttlefish for the man in the yellow feathers. We're fattening him up for Christmas. <laughs> right. That's it. I'm not going. I'm going to stay at home and watch the Sullivans win the war again. Ted, you remember what the councillor lady said? You wouldn't tell her, would you? Yes, I would. Yes, yeah, so would I. All right, Ted. It's 50 bucks for the dead fish or a miserable time at the ball. What's it going to be? Someone should blow families up. See ya. After you, Tweety Pie. Listen, Wog. Uh, 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 oh, one more thing. What? Duck your head when we go past Colonel Sanders.
G'day, gorgeous. Valentino here. How about you get that horny little body of yours over here because I'm revved up and raring to go. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Peterson, is Kathy there? <laughs> Uh, no, no, it's not Craig Borpet, it's someone I don't know. I'll call you back. <laughs> Damn! Hey, no. What are you doing back? Bloody chook suit. What? No, I couldn't handle the phone. What did you say? I couldn't fit in the car. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Ted, I've got it all sorted out. What are you doing? I'm organising you your own chauffeur-driven vehicle. Well, what? A taxi truck. <laughs> Bloody wog! Good night, cock a doodle do! Oh, 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 you're a wag. <laughs> oh, didn't we have a lovely time? Certainly did, Phil. <gasps> oh, the look on the wog's face when I won the best costume. <laughs> look at this, must be worth at least 50 bucks. Oh, I'd say at least 150, Tim. Even better. Oh. Lord, the way those snotty young libs are, the more money I can take from them, the better. <laughs> And just fancy Malcolm Fraser himself being there. Yeah. Oh. I got him back a beauty for goth, though. What'd you do? I said, look, Malcolm, I'm no chook, I'm a peacock, and I'm going to get you. <laughs> Laugh. That spoiled his blue ribbon ice cream. <laughs> So you enjoyed yourself? Oh, I certainly did. Of course, I was with you, my little chickadee. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, this is so sudden. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking, you know, that marriage woman was right. I should show you much more um, affection. Oh, Ted. <laughs> Tonight? Yep, yep. I reckon so, Phil. I can feel me feathers ruffling. <laughs> Get me out of the suit. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, look at the feathers. <laughs> oh, 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 Ted, the zipper's <laughs> you know what this means? What? Not tonight, Tweety Pie. <laughs> <laughs>